Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from Cantilever and welcome to this balance and bar session and our latest collaboration with Rejuvenate Physio. Remember, all our previous sessions are available to catch up on on the Cantilever YouTube channel. We're delighted to be joined by Louise from Rejuvenate Physio, along with Lissy, Evie and Anaya. We absolutely love to see how you're getting on with the sessions. So this week, we've got a super special prize. You could win a cantilever wobble plate in the colour of your choice and the chance to be in the next Rejuvenate and Cantilever session. For your chance to win, please tag Cantilever and Rejuvenate Physio in your social media posts and use the hashtag balance and bar. If you have a private account, please direct messages with your videos and pictures. Have a great session, everybody. Thanks, Natalie. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Balance and Bar session, which is Pilates and ballet inspired. All you'll need for today's class is some space around you and an object such as a chair to help balance and steady yourself. If you have a cantilever wall bar or ballet bar, absolutely fantastic. Just have them close by and ready for later. As always, listen to your body and only do what feels comfortable. Remember to focus on the quality, not the quantity of your movements. Have a drink with you in case you get thirsty and remember it's okay to take a break and rest at any time. Okay, is everyone ready to go? Okay, so to begin with we need to do a warm up to get your heart pumping and your blood circulating around your body. Let's begin by jogging on the spot and I'll start my stop clock, let's go. So pump those arms, lift those knees, that's it, bring 30 seconds worth. Think about pushing off the floor, driving those arms. That's it, keep going, nice high knees if you can, or start to pick them up a little bit higher. There's 10 seconds left to go. And then we're going to change into low front kicks, where we turn from right to left. Okay, girls, let's change. So start kicking your legs out in front, good. When you're in the rhythm, start turning from one side of your room round the other, that's it. Think about stretching through those feet, straightening those knees. Your hands can be on your hips or your arms can be out to the side. It doesn't matter what you choose to do. Fantastic. Let's move on to some diagonal heel flicks where you move your right heel towards your left glute and then your left heel towards your right glute. Okay, so hands behind your back, let's go. Let's start those heel flicks. That's it. So try and go for the opposite side. That's it. Very good. Point those toes as you pick the foot up off the floor. Think about keeping your core nice and tight, staying on the spot. Very, very good. Fantastic. Okay, we're now going to move on to side high knee pull downs. So if everyone takes their arms up by their ears, pulls one elbow down as they lift the same knee up. No opposites, so same side, Lissy. That's it. And keep going. Fantastic. So lateral high knee pull downs and see if you can make it as quick as you can. Pick the knee up as high as it will go, point those toes, stretch those arms in between. Let's be nice and tight, ready for the work that we're going to do. Fantastic. Okay, let's move on to doing some spotty dogs. So we're kicking behind us and we're doing a turn from right to left. So your hands can be on your hips or off to the side. Let's go. Fantastic. Sit, push off the floor. As you push off, try and straighten those knees. And they bend a little bit when you land to help you drive back up in the air. Very good. 
We have 10 more seconds to go. Super. Right, we'll keep those hands on our hips and we're going to do some rebound shapes in the shape of a T. So feet together, you'll jump forwards, you'll jump over to the right, back into the centre, over to the left, back over to the right and back to the starting position and repeat. That's it, so make that cape shape. Let's go. Good, as you push off the floor, Push through those toes and point your feet and toes. Keep your legs glued together. Try and use your Achilles to do the work. Absolutely fantastic. Two more warm up exercises to go in this circuit. So the next one is sprinting on the spot while swinging your arms behind you and then up by your ears. Let's go, fast feet. That's it. Imagine the floor's really hot and you don't want to touch it for very long. So super quick arms and legs. 15 more seconds to go. Try and keep that speed up. Really quick, fast feet. Super and I are very nice. Okay, the final exercise in this circuit is a shoulder stand to stand up without using your hands to a star jump. And then you sit back down and roll back to the shoulder stand position. Let's go. So a nice tight shoulder stand, feet up to the ceiling, roll out, big tight star jump. Fantastic. In the shoulder stand, keep those legs glued together. Really drive off that floor up into a beautiful tight star shape. Five seconds to go. Can you get another one in? Excellent. So that is the first part of warm up complete. So now it's time to wake up your muscles a little bit more. And we will begin this with exercise number one, which is crab walking. So if everyone begins with their feet hip width apart, toes facing forwards, knees slightly soft so they're bent with your kneecaps lined up with the middle of your feet. Fantastic, girls. If you then step your right leg out to the side, so you're in a wider squat, then step your left leg to the right, so you're back to parallel, and you can either repeat a couple of times in that direction, or you can switch sides like Anaya's doing. Beautiful. Fantastic. So we'll would maybe do four or five in each direction. Absolutely amazing. And then we'll move on to exercise number two, which is a squat to a heel raise. So again, position your feet hip width apart, toes facing forwards, lower down into your squat. So bend your knees, keeping your kneecaps lined up with where your laces would be. Then drive up three feet. So your knees straighten and you lift to releve without letting your ankles roll. And then lower your heels back to the floor and repeat. Let's try eight of those girls. Smoothly down, smoothly up. Fantastic. Super stuff. Keep your cores active and engaged so you're not wobbling. And as you drive up onto your tiptoes, imagine as a balloon floating you up towards the sky. So you go straight up in the air. Brilliant. One more. Fabulous. Exercise number three, monster walking. So we still have our feet hip width apart, our toes facing forwards, our knees slightly soft so they're bent. And you're going to step one leg forwards and step the other leg to the same position. Super. You can either do that a few steps forwards or you can do forwards with both legs and then backwards with both legs. That's it. Let's wake up these glutes, all of those muscles around the back of your hip. Fantastic. Very nice. Exercise number four is a scooter squat to a T-shape. So stand on one leg and imagine you're standing in the center of the clock. Let the knee 
of the leg you're standing on, soften slightly, and then reach the free leg that's up in the air towards 12 o'clock. Good, so you lower into a squat, fantastic, come up tall, and then lean your body forward and your leg behind to a T-shape, super, and repeat. So reach the leg forward and squat, and then backwards, so you lower to a T-shape. Good, watch your knee as you lower into the squat so that it tracks straight over the middle of your foot and doesn't collapse in. And when you're in the T shape, keep your core active and your hips nice and square so you're not twisting, fantastic. Switch over onto the other leg and try a few on the opposite side. Very good. Only lower as far into the squat or the T-shape as you feel in control of. Don't worry about going too far. You're better to do a smaller movement well than a large movement with poor technique. Excellent. Okay, let's move on to a sideways lunge to a single leg balance position. So if everyone takes a big step over to the right hand side, so your right knee bends, your left leg straightens, then drive up through your right leg so the knee straightens and you hold your balance position, keeping your hips level. Super, then step over to the left, a big lunge. Good, and drive up on the left leg to a balanced position, super. Let's do three more in each direction at your own pace. Fantastic. As you lunge, like with any other squat activity, make sure that your kneecap is in the right place so your knee's not collapsing in over your big toe. It's staying lined up with where your laces would be if you had your trainers on. When you stand on one leg, make sure you're nice and straight and you don't look like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Absolutely fantastic. The final exercise in this activation circuit is an inchworm to a star tap. So if everyone begins by folding into pike fold, then walk your hands forwards towards a front support position where your hands are underneath your shoulders. At that point, step one leg out to the side and keep it on the floor. Then step the opposite leg out to the side and then bring one leg back in at a one at a time. Super, so you end up going from hip width to wider. Super, and you can stay there and do a few. Good. And then you can walk back to pike fold and repeat once more. So we'll walk out to front support and then tap your feet out to the side so it looks like you're doing a mini star jump. Good, keep those cores active. Try and keep a nice straight plank shape with your hips open. Heads shouldn't, chin shouldn't be stuck on chest to see if you can get those heads up, a nice neutral plank, super stuff. And then when you're ready, return back and stand up nice and tall. Excellent, that's part two of warm up complete. So it's time to do the final component of our warm-up, which involves some more explosive work to really get you ready for the session ahead. Exercise number one is a high jump to a long jump to run back to the starting position with high knees. So everyone get their arms swinging as they jump up in the air. As you land, jump as far forwards as you can and then run back to the beginning with high knees. Super, let's do five of those. So up, long and high knees back. Super, as you're running back, keep everything super tight. Try and point those toes and lift those knees up towards your chest. Very good girl. So you just have two left. Super, last one. Amazing. Exercise number two is skater jumps. So stand on one leg, 
keep your balance and then stride over to the opposite side, land on that leg and repeat in the opposite direction. Super. As you land, allow the knee to soften and bend so it takes the shock out of your leg and try to keep your body nice and straight and still. So we're aiming not to look like that leaning tower of Pisa. We should be as still as a statue as we land. And it will help if you keep your core nice and tight to so draw in through those tummy muscles as you land. Very good, girls. Super. Final exercise of this circuit is tuck jump. So we're going to do five tuck jumps where your knees and your thighs move as close to your chest as possible. And on the final one, you hold a nice, strong landing position. Let's go. Drill, knees up, up, high, 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 and stick that landing. Good, okay, super stuff. That's warm up complete. Let's all have a quick drink and we'll be ready to start the session. Now everyone feels nice and warm. We will start our ballet and Pilates inspired balance and bar session. This is a great opportunity to work on your alignment, your control, your balance and the strength in your legs. And we know that exercises like heel raises are really important to help protect your ankles and reduce your injury risk. So before we begin the first sequence, we're just going to run you through a good heel raise or releve position. So if everyone pops their hands on their version of their ballet bar, wall bar, whatever you choose. We're going to start with your feet hip width apart with your toes facing forwards. So you're in parallel. It's always good to learn things in parallel before we go to turn out. As you rise up onto your tiptoes, keep your toes flat to the floor and nice and long. So don't let them scrunch. Your knee should be in a neutral position and Lissy will show you what we don't want to see is that your knees hyperextend and you lock out or that they do the opposite and they bend too much. Fantastic, so back to neutral Lissy, brilliant. You should have weight through your big toe and little toe so your ankles are not rolling. Cores are engaged. Hands are resting just lightly on the surface and your body is going straight up to the ceiling, not leaning forwards. So that's the correct position you should be in. So we'll let the girls come down before their calves start to burn too much. And we're going to try and work on that position now in circuit number one. Okay, so if everyone pops their feet fingertips and their hands lightly resting on their ballet bar, feet in parallel, toes facing forwards. We will begin by rising up onto releve, so into the heel raise position and lower back down and we'll do six to eight of those. So it's almost like one second on the rise, one second as you lower. Super. Good, keep those cores tight. So just draw in through that tummy a little bit more, Evie. Fantastic. When you've done six to eight, remain up on releve. Brilliant. And we're going to add in a mini plie. So your knees bend and then return to the straight but not locked and hyperextended position. So we'll do six to eight of those. As you plie, try and keep your heels nice and high off the floor. Don't let your ankles roll. So imagine there's a coin under your big toe and little toe, and you want to keep those coins there. You don't want anyone to be able to slip under and take the coins away. Fantastic. On the sixth to eighth one, stay in the plie position. And now pulse. So 
do tiny movements in and out of that plie, very small movements. Good, keep, about, keep thinking about these shoulders being square, girls. Heads being up, fantastic. Now, straighten the knees and return to the releve. Try and keep those heels nice and high and you're going to do a side bend. So if you side bend to the right, your left arm slides across the ballet bar and your right arm goes over the top if you're going to the left and the opposite if you're going to the right. Good, hand back on the ballet bar and then go in the opposite direction. Super, keep that releve. Feel how your weight moves from one side to the other. Nice, smooth, fluid movements. So if you're moving to the left, your right arm lifts over your head. You side bend to the left, then you come back. And when you're moving to the right, the left arm side bends over the top. Super. Good, when we've done eight of those, stay up in releve, and now you're going to pick one arm off the ballet bar up overhead to a fifth position. Super, if you feel super steady, as you lower that arm, raise the other so they switch and change in the air. Try and keep that nice stable releve position. Core's engaged, body's beautifully straight. If you feel too wobbly, you can lift one arm up and then lower it back to the ballet bar before you take the other arm off. Fantastic. Heads up, shoulders square. When we've done eight of those, see if you can lift both arms up to fifth and hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and lower your heels back to the floor. Excellent job, girls. That's circuit number one complete. So it's time for circuit number two, which is also a combined plie and releve circuit, but this time we'll be working in our first ballet position. So if everyone faces their ballet bar, super, feet together to begin with, and then what you will want to do is slowly turn your toes away from your body without forcing the movement. So you want to use the muscles in your hip to do that. You don't want to cheat by trying to arch your back, lock your knees or lower the arches in your feet. Keeping that first ballet position there now, we are going to begin by doing six to eight plies, where you bend your knees. As you plie, make sure you keep pushing your knees out and back. Don't allow them to collapse in. So lower into the plie, keeping the heels on the floor. Not doing grand plie plies today, just regular plies. Good, keep your core activated, shoulders square, and when you've done six to eight, just stay in that plie position. Super. Now keep the plie and rise onto releve. So your knees stay bent as you rise up onto releve, and then you lower your heels back to the floor. Super, let's do six to eight of those. Again, keep working those muscles around the back of your hips. So your glutes and some other deeper muscles that all work together to control your turnout. So your knees stay pointing away from your body and don't collapse in. Fantastic. On the sixth to eighth one, stay up on releve. Check that you have weight through your big toe and little toe, so your foot is not sickling or winging. Good, and then allow this time your knees to fall in and to push out. So you're gonna allow them to come in and out. And this is going to activate your, the muscles that help control your turnout and give you extra turnout range. We'll do six to eight of those. Brilliant. 
on the sixth to eighth repetition, check your knees are back in the correct turnout position and now straighten your knees. Good, and then lower back into plie. And we'll do six to eight of those and so keep that releve nice and high. So your heels stay off the floor and you do plie to extend, plie to extend. Naya, very nice. Good girl, just lift your head. Beautiful work. Good releve, girls. Very nice. On the sixth to eighth repetition, stay up on releve with your knees straight. And again, you're going to lift one arm up towards fifth and then switch and change with the other hand if you feel able. Keep your balance. Try not to allow your ankles to roll. So you don't want to feel that all of the weight goes on your little toe on the outside of your foot, which is sickling. And equally, you don't want to feel that all the weight rolls onto the big toe and the inside of your foot, which is winging. You just want to keep a nice neutral position. And when we're ready, girls, if you can, lift both arms up to fifth. Make those bodies nice and tall and hold for eight, seven. Arms up, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Amazing girls, beautiful work. So let's move on to circuit number three, which is a combined plie and lunge circuit. So if everyone starts side onto their ballet bar, and pops their feet in a second ballet position. So your feet are wider than hip width and your toes are pointing away from your body so you're using your turnout. Had the hand that's closest to the ballet bar, rest it on the ballet bar. Make sure your core is engaged, your shoulders are square and you're looking straight ahead. Then you're going to bend your knees and lower into plie, keeping your heels down on the floor. And as you lower into that plie, keep pushing those knees back so they don't collapse in. Fantastic, we'll do six to eight of those. Smoothly up and smoothly down. Fantastic. As you return to the straight position, just control those knees. Don't allow them to lock back. Excellent work, girls. Now, we're going to stay down in that plie, and then you're going to do a quarter turn towards your front leg. So both toes end up facing forwards and you lower into a lunge and then a quarter turn towards your back leg and you go back down into plie. So your toes should be turned out in the plie and they should be in parallel in the lunge. Super, let's try six to eight of those. Keep your body up nice and tall core engaged. This is going to start to burn through your legs. It's going to give you good stamina and strength down there. Brilliant. Check your knees throughout so your kneecaps should always stay lined up with the middle of your feet, whether you're in the lunge in parallel or whether you're in plie in the second turned out position. Fantastic, stay in the lunge now and we're going to challenge your balance. One arm is going to lift up to fifth and then you can either lower that arm down before taking the other arm off or you can switch and change in the air. Keep your back knee as close to the floor as you can without it touching and your body should be nice and straight. So you're drawing up through your core, fantastic. When you're ready, see if you can lift both arms up and hold that position for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Excellent, girls. So we've just worked one side there, and what I'd suggest is everyone practices on the other leg at a later point in the day. 
circuit number four is designed to work your glutes and your hamstrings a little bit more as well as to challenge your balance so what we're going to do is position yourself facing your ballet bar or the surface you're using pop your hands on the top feet hip width apart and I'd like you to fold down to a half pike position which is sometimes also called a tabletop position where you make a straight line from your hips to your fingertips so your head is in between your arms your back is nice and flat imagine there's a tray of drinks balanced on it and your core is subtly working so you're drawing your belly button away from the floor in that position, then pick your right foot up off the floor so the, so the knee bends to a right angle. Good. Toes are pointed directly behind you. Keep your back nice and flat. Soften your support leg knee so it's slightly bent. And then pick the leg that's in the air up. So the tiptoes go from pointing behind you straight up to the ceiling in a donkey kick action and then you bring the knee back down to the starting position. Super. So think about keeping that tray of drinks balanced across your lower back and the back of your pelvis. Good. We'll do six to eight donkey kicks. And the toes should try and point straight up to the ceiling. Try not to let the leg and the foot fall in. Fantastic, keep that support leg slightly soft. Work your deep stomach muscles by drawing your belly button subtly away from the floor. Lift your leg as high as you can without arching your back. On the sixth to eighth repetition, hold the leg up in a donkey kick position. All you're now going to do is straighten your knee keeping nice and square at your hips and then bend the knee back to the right angle position and we'll try six to eight of those think about keeping your support leg nice and steady so your ankle isn't rolling use as little or as much hand support as you need amazing job girls on six to eight repetition keep the knee straight so the ankle, knee and hip are at the same height. Then tap the toes of the leg down to the floor, keeping the knee straight, and then lift the leg back, back up so you make a straight line from your knees to your fingertips. Keep your core working the whole way through. So we don't want to see that your back flexes or arches. It should just be the hip of the leg that's lifting and lowering that's doing the work. So you can do six to eight of those. On the last repetition, keep that nice T-shape and then see if you can lift your hands off the ballet bar and circle them round and down by your side and back up six to eight times. Try and keep parallel to the floor. So your chest, and your thigh of the leg that's lifted are in the same line as the floor. Try six to eight, this may feel a little bit wobbly. Try and keep those hips nice and square. Fantastic. And when you're done, return to an upright position. Amazing girls, beautiful control. That's circuit number four done. So it's time for our final circuit, which will challenge your balance more than anything we've done today. Again, it's your choice which leg you work on during the session, but please try the other leg later in the day. So to begin with, if everyone faces their ballet bar with their feet hip width apart, Choose your leg to balance on and pick the other leg up to a parallel passe position. So now you'll see one leg is bent and in passe and the other leg, your support leg, the knee is nice and straight. What you're going to do is pop a small bend in your support leg 
as you swing the other leg from parallel passe towards an attitude position only as far as you can without arching your back so use your hip to do the motion and then go back to the parallel passe position so the knee points straight ahead to begin with as you swing the leg back what you'll feel is that your knee starts to point away from your body and you move into turn out towards attitude. Good. As you swing the leg back, straighten the support knee. Super. Let's try six to eight of those. Think about keeping your hips level and square so you're not twisting. Only lift the leg as high as you can using your hip muscles, your glutes. We don't want to see you arching your back at this point. Brilliant. When you've done six to eight, return to the single leg balance position with your free leg in the parallel passe stance. And we're going to rise up onto releve. As you lift onto releve, think about keeping those toes long and not scrunched. Don't let your ankle roll from side to side. Don't let your knee lock out. And your body should lift straight up to the ceiling, not rock forwards. Good. Try six to eight smoothly up and down. Keep your body as tall as you can. And imagine that balloon is floating you up towards the ceiling. Good. When you've done six to eight, see if you can keep that single leg balance position in releve with your free leg in passe. And who can lift their arms up to fifth and hold that position for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Amazing job, girls. That's today's session complete. Well done. Thank you so much to Louise from Rejuvenate Physio, Lissy, Evie, and Anaya for another brilliant session. Don't forget to tag us in your posts for your chance to win this amazing prize. Or if you have a private account, please send them to us directly and use the hashtag balance and bar. See you next week.